Alright, welcome back everybody to another review of an, Obi an episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi. So this time I'm joined by... I'm back, Jonah Morgan. And unfortunately Logan could not make it because he had planned, but we are going to be talking about the final episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi. And our thoughts on the show as a whole will be at the end. We're going to begin with this episode. Uh, it was only 50 minutes, but it felt like an entire movie with how good it was. Yeah, for sure. There was a rumor, like someone like spread a rumor that it was like an hour and thirty minutes. This last episode was not true. It's like it's like it's, it's about half of that. Without credits, it's like forty five probably. Yeah, yeah, actually it would. It's be. shorter actually. Now that I think about it, but they jam it, so they jam so much into it. But like it's not too much. It's perfectly paced and yeah. everything. Because it picks up right where the last episode left off with them. Is there anything bad? Not that I can think of. Because the only okay, yeah, I'll talk. I'll talk about this right here. Um, my only thing bad, I don't, like my only glaring thing that I had wrong with this series was the fact that I wasn't the biggest fan of how you say her name, Reva. Reva. I wasn't her. I wasn't the biggest fan of her, but her character arc in this at last episode is very good. Starting from like episode, like bits of episode four, she was annoying to me. A majority of episode five, and then a lot of this episode, you really see her arc come full circle. And so, and I, and I guess correctly, whenever I, whenever like. The second time she shows up, I'm like, she's probably that youngling at the beginning. And yeah. Yes, she's That's the That's what a lot of people were speculating. But with this episode, it's a lot happened in this episode. But it's, like, so perfectly paced, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Because you have a good a good part of the episode is, Obi is them trying to outrun the Star Destroyer. It and then, feels like Last Jedi. But better? But, but like, good. <laughs> but the exact opposite. But the exact opposite. It's like... Yeah, but like the thing is, the Last Jedi. That's the entire movie, is them running. Basically. Yes. Whereas this is like, hey, let's get gas. Less, less like, than half the episode. This is like, and this has a very simple fix. Obi Wan is positive that if he leaves that the, ship, that Vader will follow him, and he's correct. And yeah. Vader does it immediately, even though the Grand Inquisitor is like, oh, I mean, he's one dude. Yeah. And and, and Vader, and Vader like, says, no, he isn't. So then they follow Obi Wan. And he's right. Yeah. The well, well, actually, we'll save that. Do we know what planet it is that they fight on? It looks cool, but I've never seen it before. Yeah, I've never seen it before. Either. Now, because if it if it had been like Mustafar or something, I would have lost my oh my wrath. god, that would have been. That I feel been like better. that. Would, I feel like people would have been like, oh, they're recreating Revenge of the Sith. One, that's a good thing. Two, they might be right. Yeah, <laughs> but I I liked how the planet looked. It looked it was, yeah, I like okay. I like uh, the other half of the episode as well. With Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. That one's really good because... Fighting Reva. Because it, it, Uncle Owen was never really that great of a character. In, I don't in, in, like in, in Uncle Owen, okay. Yeah, but this episode redeemed him a little bit. A little bit. Cause especially when he, when he says the line, he is my own. You just, you feel that. Yeah. And like, and even towards the end of the episode where he lets... Yeah, because he says it to... Um, Obi-Wan talks he to says him. It, he says it to Obi-Wan. Yeah. Where he's like, hey, you want to... It's like, hey, you want to meet him? And I was like, yeah, I like that. Um... Also, the fact that he finally freaking says hello there. I called the as soon as as soon as Obi Wan uh, as soon as uh, Owen says, "Do you want to meet him?" My dad goes, "He's gonna say hello there," and he did. And, he, and like, he did, and it was fantastic. Me, me and my brother straight up shot our arms up and just went yes. And then my mom just went. There were geeks. there were a couple moments like that in this episode for me where I just, where I stood up. My dad stood up at one point. Yeah. There was one moment my dad stood up at, but we'll talk about. I watched. I watched it this morning. I watched it like early this morning when, because me and my dad we, we went to see Black Phone yesterday, so we got we got back home a little later. So we were like we're getting up like early in the morning so we can watch this. Heck yeah! And we we rewinded some parts multiple times, like to look into them and just watch them again. But we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. Yeah, because I mean, there's really only two more. Well, I mean, I do like that they finally got Leia back to her planet. Because Leia thinks that... Side note, she's one of the best kid actors I've ever seen. Absolutely. She's good. Absolutely. She's incredible. Yeah. I, the, I, like, I didn't expect... When I saw her as a kid, I was like, okay, usually kid actors are really hit and miss. And she looked like Leia. She did. That was really... Like, that's perfect <laughs> you know, The thing is, some people are hating on the Obi-Wan series. They're like, oh, the kid acting is bad. No, it's incredible. <laughs> well, like, you know what bad, what good acting looks like. Jake Lloyd was bad acting. Yeah, but like it was hilarious. Young, so young, it, it got young, a pass. Young Boba Fett was bad acting. Young Boba Fett was bad acting. He it was just funny that he like was always looked pissed off. Yeah, whereas young Leia is one of, is great. Is one of the best actors I would say in this franchise. Like I saw like some of the best kid acting I 
like I've ever seen in two days because black because I saw Black Phone. That acting is incredible. Yeah, like, from what I've seen. Because like all the all the actors are kids basically, except for a couple. And then Leia is is great. Yeah. And like you see Luke for only a little bit, but like I mean his actors. I mean he, he barely says he anything. He looks like he sa- he looks like young Anakin. He doesn't. Yeah, he that's doesn't also, look as. That's, that's also perfect. Casting. He doesn't look as much like Luke as I thought he was going to, but he looks like Anakin is what I told my dad. Which fits because his of, his eyes look like Anakin. Yeah, absolutely. But I do like oh towards the end where like Leia thinks that Obi Wan is dead. And then they have that reunion at the end. For a second, That's I so thought good. I thought he was gonna tell Leia who her parents were, but he did it in the perfect way. Oh my god! That... And yeah, he says he says the traits that he got from her parents, and he and he's like, "I'm sorry, I can't tell you more." And she says, "What did she say? I don't need." She says, "I don't need it." And she looks yeah. over at Organa. At the Organa, which is so good. I which love is, that. Which is good. Yeah, I love that. Um, the uh, the very end of the freaking episode. When, right after he says hello to my mom looks at my dad and goes, well, dang, you didn't get your, you didn't get your Qui-Gon. <laughs> <laughs> they got Liam Neeson to do a 10 second clip because he wanted to do it. In an interview, he was, uh, they were like, uh, why'd you do it? He's, he goes, and he basically says out of respect for George Lucas and Ewan McGregor. It's. And he and he and he goes he goes I wouldn't have wanted anybody else to play Qui Gon. The duh. timing of my mother saying that was so perfect because she literally went oh dang you didn't get any of your Qui Gon. Two seconds later his Force Ghost starts showing starts showing up. My dad gave the best reaction I've ever seen him give to anything, and, and I wish I caught it on camera. And the thing he was is, like he was just like yes. And the thing is Liam Neeson, he was he was fairly like old whenever the whenever Phantom Menace came out, so he doesn't look that different. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He barely looks different. Like it's, at all? No. And and so. And with how much they've been like hinting towards Obi Wan, because like, talking you you, to him? you saw him. Yeah, I had not looked anything up for this. I had mm-hmm. not seen anything. And so when you see him with the long hair, and I go, "Do we get Liam Neeson?" And right before he turns around, my dad goes, "We get Liam Neeson." And he turns around, and it's the what took you so long? It's so good. It, it was so. It was incredible. Effective. Yeah, and you also get this for ten seconds, and you also get Palpatine like five minutes before that too in the hologram. Yeah, Ian McDermott. Yeah, I mean he's there for. Yeah, but it's it was still really awesome to see him too. Do we want to transition to talking about the big stuff? Because I was going to say something about Ian McDermott's. Palpatine I mean, I mean, I mean, we thing. can't, we can't, because there's only a couple more things to talk um, about. Um, whenever so like, Anakin, Vader keeps talking about how he killed Anakin. That's what I want to talk about. That the re, the official rematch between Vader and Obi Wan is one of the best things I have seen. It's the best moment in the show. But but the Ian McDermott thing when um, Vader, yeah Vader says Vader says Obi Wan means nothing. That is the, the official death of Anakin. That's when Anakin because like there was still some Anakin left in him because like yeah. he fights with emotion because Obi Wan kicks his butt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Because I mean, I mean, even with him saying that you did not kill Anakin, I did. He's still and, alive. And, and then that's when that was, that was straight up the moment where Obi Wan goes, "Then my friend is truly dead." And he calls him Darth. Yes, and I'm which so- is what Alec Guinness called. He doesn't call him. Dar- he doesn't call him Vader. He doesn't call him Darth Vader. He calls him Darth, which is what Alec Guinness calls him in The New Hope, <laughs> which is good. So and good. so me and my dad rewinded a couple times, and so in that scene, okay, so the scene where Obi Wan cuts. Vader's mask. I noticed this too. This was insane. There's. Are you talking about the light, or the the thing with the rebel? With rebels. the rebel. With okay. The rebel so thing. yeah. First thing, he cuts the left side of his mask in Star Wars Rebels when he's fighting Ahsoka. The best moment of that show. The bet. The one of the best moments in Star Wars. Yes, the same. She cuts the right side. She cuts the other side. And who gets the entire thing off? Luke. It's like with each Luke cut, or when um, in because Rebel because it was in, Anakin who it was Obi Wan who cuts the mask first because Rebels takes place after Rebels this takes show. place Rebels takes place five years after the show yes five years before New Hope yes and that is when I believe that like this is not uh, me and Logan were talking this is not Vader at his peak because he still has that emotion left in him yes Rebels is Vader at his peak because that entire show they're. I, I saw I saw an entire compilation they're, of him in that show. They're dead oh terrified God. of him. Yes. Every single time he shows up, they're like, "Oh my gosh, run!" Yeah, because they're they're also just like also like the, they're, also they're, like the, the end of ro- the end. It's cold. Yes, that which is the sick. Also, the beginning of not the beginning. The end of Rogue One is the best peak, scene in is, that movie. Is peak Vader. Yeah, but 
the rematch, the official rematch of Obi Wan versus Vader, where you can tell when he Obi Wan does the stance, he does that. I right? ran. Okay, so we were sitting up, ah! we were sitting upstairs in our bonus room. I ran down the stairs and fell down the stairs when that happened. <laughs> and my dad, and my dad goes, so he's gonna win. Because, okay, me and my dad watched the video. Every single time he does that stance in canon, he wins. Every single time. Yeah. Because he does it all the time in Clone Wars, and he does it against Grievous in Revenge of the Sith. Mm -hmm. And he wins every time. Yeah. Every single time he does that stance, he has won the fight. But I love in that some, in some he way. at first, because Vader gets, because lo I love the lines that I said right before he does the stance. I will do what I goes, must. And then, and then Vader goes full on from, like, um... The line from Rebels as well. Then you then will you die. will die. I know. I know. My dad didn't ah! notice that because my dad doesn't remember as much about Star Wars. I remember. As I, do. I remember. I remember that because I hadn't. See, I haven't seen in Rebels Obi yet. in in Obi One. He said, "What does he say?" He says, "I will do what I must," which from is which is sick. From Revenge of the and, Sith. And Vader then says, "Then you will die." From and, Rebels. And in and in Rebels, when Ahsoka's fighting him, this is after she has cut his mask. Uh huh. Because I, she, she because says she says, "I won't leave you," and he says. Starting out in Matt Lanter's voice, who's the guy that plays Anakin in Clone Wars, it starts out in Matt Lanter's voice and transitions to the Vader voice, then you will die. It's, and it's... And I love that when, in this fight, because Vader gets the high ground on it and, like, crushes him. Which is sick! Rebels. I'm like... My and, dad goes, you know the... Okay, so you know the meme of Leonardo DiCaprio pointing at the TV? Yeah. My dad did that exact same thing whenever he's standing above Obi-Wan. He goes, oh, oh, high ground! Uh, <laughs> he, goes, the he goes, oh... I can't do the whistle that he does, but... Oh, yeah, no. It's... And then he starts walking away. Because Obi-Wan bursts out, and it's like... He, it, he's connect, in that moment, his, he's fully reconnected to the force. If you don't... And the scene where they are fighting, and he lifts up the boulders behind him. I'm like, you know... He did it, He did it like Rey, but better. That's the thing. Well, it's like, like Rey, Rey, in, Rey in, should in, have been related Jedi. to Obi-Wan. It would have made her that much better. I feel like she doesn't deserve it. It would no. That's what I'm saying. Is it would have made her better. It would have made her better. That because that was my going into the rise of Skywalker. That was my um, theory. That was my theory. Yeah. Was that she was some not necessarily his daughter, but related to him in some yeah. way. But that scene was just so awesome. He was just lifting it up, and then the moment where he finally slashes on across, opens the mask, and you st and you the, it's Hayden. The, in trans there. the transition between Hayden and James Earl Jones is who they finally reveal is actually Vader. Because there were some speculations that it was computer generated. Yeah. But but in this in these credits, they officially credit him as Vader. It yeah. transitioned between. And so the other thing I was going to say about that scene is, so they both their lightsabers are on, right? Uh -huh. So at some points in that, I don't know if you noticed this, but at some points during that scene, this is the scene me and my dad rewound, re, rewound, 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 rewinded. That. We'll that. Go with that. We rewinded a cut like multiple times when there is red reflecting onto his face. It is Vader. But sometimes there's blue on his face, like reflecting on his face from Obi Wan's lightsaber, and that is when you hear more of Anakin. Like, you, didn't didn't you say something about there was a tear in his eye? I think I saw that. In there's there's a tear in his eye at one point, and there's blue on his face at that moment. Holy crap! No, because whenever whenever he says I killed him, there's red. There, it's like pure red. Yeah. And whenever, like right after Obi Wan says. That my friend is truly dead. Ryder Obi Wan says Anakin, and and Anakin says um, Anakin is gone. When he said no, he, um, okay, maybe it's not after he says Anakin. He says, um, crap, 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 crap. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh yeah, he says you didn't kill Anakin. There's blue on his face at that moment, and then as soon as he says I did, there's red. I need to rewatch that to see that because that's that's really cool. Actually, it's sick. It's you know what you call that attention, attention to, to detail. detail. Now, was and, it intentional? And, I have no idea. I hope it was, but if it's not, that makes it cooler, yeah. I feel like. And when Obi-Wan is leaving, the fact that when he when Hayden is yelling through the mess, the Obi -Wan it scream. sounds it sounds so much like he it he sounds like Matt Lanter when he's doing that. Scream. It sounds like Hayden's yelling, I hate you in Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, like that makes Matt Lanter from Clone Wars. And it's it's so good. And it sounds like it sounds like Sam Whitworth Darth Maul yelling Kenobi. Oh, one other thing. The music in this show. They ne they never did the. I wish they had done, if they had done the Anakin versus Obi Wan thing, I would have cried. I would have lost my. But the thing is, they didn't, and it was still incredible because the music is fantastic. Yeah, they do a lot of original music, and it's one and it's John Williams. Also, so one of the who is retiring. Um, sadly, his last movie is Indiana Jones Five. Oh, and I wasn't here to talk about. I want to talk about a couple of things from Episode Five because I wasn't here. 
Vader stopping that ship is one of the coolest moments in Star Wars history. Absolutely. Because Rey and Kylo, like, struggle. But he... No. He, he, see, you can even see, like, I guess it depends on how big the ship is, but even then, this ship was bigger than the one He doesn't, for, he doesn't try, oh, it was, it was probably twice as big as the one from, uh, Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, and he just doesn't try. He doesn't, he, he does it with one hand, he doesn't try, and then he ri the, the Reeve of Fight. He starts reaping, oh my gosh. The Reeve of Fight. Yeah, I, I gushed about so, this in episode five. So, um, I saw a video where if Vader is using one hand to fight, he's kind of toying around with his opponents, and if he uses two hands, like he does with Ahsoka or Obi-Wan, he's like... He's trying. Yeah. He doesn't use any against Reva. He doesn't use a single... Screw Reva, okay? And he's like, okay, you know what? I don't need it. Yeah. And he I, I just, mops the floor with her. Yeah. Not even close. Uh, hopping back to that, I do like the ending that Reva had. Like, the latter no, half... No, Reva's character arc is incredible. The latter half of this uh, show for these episodes... She really, because she did not start off as a great character. But the thing reason. is, yeah. But that was also the point is like you had to see her development, and she had, despite what many Star Wars fans think, she had great development. I thought she ended up, she ended as a pretty good character. And if there is going to be a season two, I think she'll be one of the main. I think that Obi Wan will train her. Maybe. I yeah. think that's what's going to end up happening if there's a season two, because that that could be good. It'd be a bad one that we've never seen before. For yeah, me. but. Epi this this episode is fantastic. This is probably my favorite episode of this the best, show. This is the best episode. Five was good. I, Five and three are close contenders. I would say. Notice how both of those Vader is, is heavily front and center. Yeah, but give me season two, and I have one. And, I have one. I have, I have one request for season two. Give me Darth Maul. He could be the villain for season two. Maybe they would just have to be careful with a lot of the stuff in Rebels. Because it seems like Rebels is the first time that they meet, so I'm honestly okay. Well, they meet in Clone Wars all the time. You haven't, well, got, you haven't gotten to that yet. Well, no, I'm not. Well, here's the thing. Oh, this show is after Clone Wars. That, what yeah. I'm saying is like the scene of Rebels seems like that's the first time they had met in a while. I think it would. I think it would be good because, like in this show, Vader and Obi Wan meet twice. Even though it feels like like more than that, but sure, they but like, they meet twice. Like if it's if it's executed well, absolutely. But yeah, we'll like, have to see. They could I, be feel like, I feel like this is the kind of show that I would honestly be fine with it just being one season. But if there is a second oh season, no, absolutely. If there is a second season, they could all, they could do some good stuff. They uh, could they have the groundwork to have another season. But if there's not, then more power to them because yeah. this was fantastic. So, our thoughts on the show overall. Do you give episode by episode uh, numbers? Nah, okay. I, I I wanted to wait till the end of the show. Ten, thank you. Okay, anyways, let's keep going. So, uh, the show as a whole. Okay. Um, am I going first? You can go first. So, Book of Boba Fett, I would have given like a seven and a half, seven. I still enjoyed it, but like it turned I, into... I would, I would give it like a seven. It turned into Mando season three. Mando as a whole, both seasons one and two, ten. Thank you. Um, ten, ten, nine and a half, ten. Thank you. Obi-Wan. It did start off slower, but I think it was effective. It was, see, it's, it was, I love the slower start because it's exactly what I want. I would give it an... Eight and a half as a whole, maybe even nine. That that's what Logan was thinking. Because if Logan were here, he would have given like an eight or an eight and a half. I would. I'll I'll probably go. With, I will go with eight and a half because the first couple episodes, I mean it. I mean it hurt to see him not be able to like be at his full strength, but, but like it, it makes it, sense. It worked for the show. It worked for the show. It started off slower. Like people were like, why weren't there? Why wasn't there more Vader? You he gotta was wait. So effective in what he was in. Absolutely. But it. Was it as good as Mando? No, absolutely not. Absolutely but, not. Was but, it? Is it close? Eh, maybe. Is it, it better than Boba Fett? Yes. Absolutely. Ab absolutely yes. And I'm ready. Oh, so ready for Ahsoka. So, the show overall for me, I'm gonna go a nine. Okay. I loved this show. It did have its faults. Like I really going into this, I would have loved to have given it a ten. But yeah, too, there are a lot of there are several things that hold the show back. Primarily, mall, honestly, it would have at least gotten to a nine point five for me if you took some of the big like reveals from episode five about Reva and moved them to episode four. I think episode four holds this show down more than anything else. Episode four was the filler one, right? Yes, the thirty minute one. That, yes, like what happens with, with, I mean, what happened? That's the one where he drowns invest. all the stormtroopers, right? That and the, yeah, it's that. That was thing. pretty funny though. Yeah. <laughs> Like, th that episode has good moments. That episode was Jedi Fallen Order. Yes. There are Fortress Inquisitorius and the water, which is how you 
Scott the skate Vader. It, but, it was just genital. But yeah, but that episode really wasn't as good as, as was, all the yeah, other ones. Especially, nice especially looking at the two episodes, it was right in between. Oh, 100%. Because four, uh, three was uh, the, the first, first fight. Fight, if you can call it that. Him snapping somebody's neck. Oh my gosh. And then five was was probably... Was when they're storming the base. Was Is, in, is when they're storming the base and it's everything is revealed and and that you get a hayden and ewan mcgregor flashback flashback I lost that that parallels what's going on yeah in which is fantastic but and everyone's like oh hayden looks so much different i don't think he does he, he, he sort of you does. can tell he's older absolutely yes but he still looks good yeah but i'm gonna i'm definitely gonna stick with a nine this show is definitely not perfect but i think it get, it's getting way more hate than it deserves for a show to be perfect you got to be Mandalorian for one, but <laughs> but yeah, that's that's gonna wrap up the episode reviews for Obi Wan Kenobi. Next, next? Yeah. Uh, the Thor: next, Love and Thunder. The, the next review is gonna be Thor: Love and Thunder. Uh, you have no idea how excited I am. For oh, that movie. and then honestly, I think after we do Thor: Love and Thunder, we might start in the MCU on as a whole. Uh oh. <laughs> Maybe we we might do them in like small little chunks, but we're after Thor, we're probably gonna do the Iron Man movies. Anyway, so, that, so, yep, that's going to end up doing it. Please feel free to let us know what you thought of Obi-Wan down below. And if you're one of the toxic Star Wars fans, get out. We don't want you here. Any toxic comments are going to be deleted instantly. Who are nitpicking and, like, who complaining about Because everybody who nitpicked about Reva now don't have a single, leg. Like, was it perfect? No, absolutely not. You had... No, it, it was, like, you You can absolutely have problems with the show, but, Reva, don't, but, don't, it, but, don't, but don't insult people who like the show and don't think your opinion is fact. Because... And never say that the Leia actress is bad because she's fantastic. Exactly. But anyways, that is going to do it. Stay tuned for the Thor Love and Thunder review, and we'll see you all next time. Later, Whippets.